Hello, world history students. This is Mr. Everton coming to you from on the road uh, with a video about the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, which we talked about some in class, but this is going to be your official like notes on the Industrial Revolution. We have the Industrial Revolution is a huge big deal. We're going to have two different videos specifically devoted to it, and then there's going to be, I mean, it's going to affect basically everything that happens in the rest of the class. Um, there, you know, it's one of the biggest events in world history. So let's get started. Today we're talking about causes. Next class we'll talk. I mean, next vid notes we'll talk about effects. Um, so to start off with, let's define what the industrial revolution is. And I don't really have like a straight up definition for you. The industrial revolution is like several different things happening together. So for one thing, mechanization. So like this woman here is making cloth by hand. She's using traditional tools in order to make cloth. And after the Industrial Revolution, people stopped doing that so much and they began to increasingly make everything um, using machines. And that made it faster. And it meant that you could make more stuff. So before one person would like weave fabric together into cloth and then turn that cloth into clothing. Um, now we have people mass producing things using machines, which makes a lot more of it for less money. Um, those machines are usually powered by burning fossil fuels, specifically coal and oil. And those are the two things that get burned in order to power the machinery um, that is used to make all this stuff. And because the machinery is large, um, it needs to be in a central location, right? Like it's not something that can just be in an individual person's house, which is what people used to do. They had what was called a cottage industry and the tools were small enough you could do it in your house. But now the machines are massive and you need to have a special place to put them. And so those are factories. People start building factories in cities um, because they need to have a lot of housing around for the people to come work at the factory. So these factories are mass producing goods that people want to buy. And that leads to large numbers of people moving to the cities so they can be near to the factory before everybody lived in the country, right? Because that's where farming happened out in the country where you would work on the land in order to grow crops. But now because most workers are, you know, work is changing, right? Farming is starting to be done by fewer and fewer people. And um, factories are being built in the cities, and that leads to urbanization, which is migration from the country to the city. Um, okay, so our next question. Uh, the Industrial Revolution famously began in Great Britain. Um, a lot of times people like to act like Great Britain is extremely special for this. <laughs> um, there's a variety of reasons why it happened there, though. It's not just because, like, Great Britain is the best. Um, in fact, Great Britain is not the best. <laughs> Nobody's the best. Uh, anyway, the first, the Industrial Revolution really began with the British textile industry, which means use, uh, taking um, cloth, uh, excuse me, taking cotton and raw materials like cotton and wool and turning them into fabric that people can then wear. That's the textile industry. And one of the reasons why it happened in Great Britain is because there's large amounts, large deposits of coal and iron ore that are near the surface of the earth in Great Britain. You can see on this map here in red, that is the center of British like coal mining country. And it be it's this like large centralized deposit of coal. And that became a very common job during this time period was to be a miner. Here you can see some kids who are mining um, you know, that's another feature of the Industrial Revolution is child labor. We'll get to that later. Um, all of this coal, uh, let me see. Another reason, let me step back. Before the Industrial Revolution, people would burn wood. People would burn wood and they would use wood in order to make their homes. Um, and they started to run out of trees. There weren't enough trees in Great Britain to sustain the amount of heat that people needed. And so they turned to coal. And then in order to have building materials, right, they used to build their houses out of wood. Now they're starting to turn to steel, which is used, which is made using iron ore. So coal and iron take the place of wood, um, which leads to lots of mining because coal and iron ore are in the ground. And so you need people to dig it out of the ground. 
Another reason why the Industrial Revolution happens in Great Britain is because the British Parliament, their government, passed lots of laws that promoted entrepreneurship. An entrepreneur is somebody who um, creates a business, somebody who comes up with an idea in order to make money. And one of the things that made it so that people in Great Britain were better able to do that was patent law. And a patent is just a piece of paper that says you are own an idea and you get paid when people use that idea. So because they had patents available, that made lots of people in Great Britain interested in inventing things because they knew that if they came up with a good idea that other people wanted to use, that they would make them rich. So patents promoted people having more ideas, promoted entrepreneurship. And another reason why it happened in Great Britain was because Great Britain had access to lots of raw materials because of colonialism, because Great Britain had lots of colonies, because Great Britain was overseas, taking other people's land from them and harvesting the natural resources and sending them back to Great Britain means Great Britain had lots of raw materials which are necessary in order to be able to run a factory. If you're gonna make it, for example, if, if you're making cotton textiles, you need cotton which originally they got for you know they got from their colonies in the Americas and then later they would get from colonies in India and they would buy from the southern United States um, so moving on to the specific innovations that came about, um, one of them is the spinning jenny, which is invented by James Hargreaves and it's a way to make um, to turn cotton into thread a whole lot faster. And it's really um, sped up the production of cotton textiles. So the spinning jenny, like takes the place of the old spinning wheel. And then probably the most important out of all of the innovations is James Watt's steam engine. Now other people had made steam engines before. Um, you know, the first steam engine I think was invented by Newcomen. I wanna say his first name is Thomas, but people don't ever talk about Thomas Newcomen's steam engine because it didn't work as well. James Watt's steam engine was a lot more efficient and worked a lot better. And the whole idea of a steam engine is that when you heat up water, it turns into steam and it expands. And you can use that expansion of the water to drive a piston. And that piston can create motion that can power, uh, that can power equipment in either a factory or on a railroad. So, now, because of the steam engine, if you have water and coal, you can burn the coal, heat up the water, the water expands, and that creates motion, which then you can use to do work, either by powering machines inside these textile factories or by making using a steam engine to make um, railroads work. And then the final innovation I want to tell you about is Henry Bessemer's steel manufacturing process. So people have been making steel. But Henry Bessemer's process heated the steel up hotter, burned off more of the impurities, and made it so that the steel was one, lighter, and two, stronger, which meant that it was a much higher quality steel. And that allowed people later in the 19th century to be able to start building skyscrapers. Like when they start building skyscrapers in the 20th century, it's because of Henry Bessemer's steel process. Uh, it makes railroads that are sturdier and last longer and railroads allow people to travel a lot faster from place to place so the steam engine the steam engine invented by james watt and the henry bessemer steel process allow railroads to connect different cities to each other and allow people to move faster from one place to another so that's our first video on the industrial revolution um there's going to be another one that we'll do in class probably next time so look for that and um, yeah, make sure that you answer this question in three to four complete sentences. And I'll talk to you next time.